Hello everyone. Sorry for the uh, lack of videos as of late. Uh, I had some internet problems and I've had to work a lot this week. But we got it all fixed. Internet's back. I'm back. Uh, and last time I uploaded a video on uh, beginner writer mistakes when it comes to characters. Uh, and in the background here, I'm going to be editing, it's going to be like speed edits of pages. Uh, because that's where I'm at in my story right now. Well, actually, right now, uh, there is a preview of chapter one, like on the Legend of the Erased Facebook page. So for anyone interested, you're welcome to go check that out. I will put a link to it in the description. But anyways, last time it was beginner character writing mistakes. And there was a lot of comments that I got that I didn't get to read. So this is going to be a part two of that. Uh, And without any further ado, the first comment we are starting starting with is the Bolt Bartle, and I, I apologize if I get any of these names wrong. What not to do? Make the perfect character. It's a mistake that you shouldn't do. The opposite is also true. Never make a weak character with only weaknesses. Take one punch for an, for an example. Saitama is supposed to be represented as the strongest character by definition. However, he has two gigantic weaknesses. He is constantly clueless and with strong depression. And also, he r rarely adopts to a normal and cool attitude, as a hero would often do. If you are thinking about a very weak protagonist, try and give him as many handicaps not only physical, as it suits his state of mind, except for one trait of himself, that'll be a game changer at some point. Put this person in a world full of very talented people, and that'll be an interesting thing to read. Although, everything said before does not include the most important fact. Your protagonist must narrate the story, not only his, but the story in general. Don't make a superhero comic if you don't have anything to say about it. Talk about your character, why he or she develops himself or her, herself in a difficult world. Ask yourself this simple question. Why should we, the audience, read your comic? That's something that beginner writers, they make this mistake a lot. They'll write a story that they think will get big, but they never actually sit down and think, why would people like this? Why would people want to read this? They just make what they see getting popular without actually putting any thought into it. Alright, by Brandon Franson. Having a character's only point being for the sake of another character. It's a waste of space if they can't be interesting on their own. You see this a lot uh, even in, like, published anime, published manga, to where there are background characters that only exist for the sake of, say, the protagonist. Side characters with absolutely no point. No personality, no nothing. They only exist to give the main character depth. When, if a, if you wanted to bring up a character that made the main character more interesting. Having an interesting side character just adds a lot more depth to the main character because you're seeing how he he or she interacts with the side character. Uh, next one by Connor Young. Putting too much priority on what the character is instead of who they are. If your character's race, gender, sexual orientation, 
and religion are more important than their strengths, weaknesses, and personalities, and the skills and and the skills they have, then you will have only a character. Then you will only have a character that is pretty bland. This is the result of forced diversity. Representation matters, but there has to be an actual character behind that representation. That is an issue that I'm seeing a lot with Disney recently. Like in Star Wars or in Frozen, they throw in these stereotypes just to diversify their character roster, but there's no actual character behind the character other than the fact that they are, you know, this, uh, you know, whatever. Like, if you want to have a character that's gay, or one that represents the LGBTQ community, like, if all they are is gay, you have just insulted that in community, because there's a lot more to these people than just being gay. Or, you know, whatever. Same thing with race, gender, religion, anything. If you have a character that represents Christianity, and all they are is Christian, and there's no, like, actual person behind it, well, then you've just insulted the Christian community. Because humans are a lot more deep than stuff like that. That's just, you know, an add-on. It's DLC to the actual character. Alright, by James Yin. Writing a character that is an impersonification of the writer him herself. Because who doesn't think they're perfect? I see this a lot as well in beginner writings to where you'll make to where the beginner writer will make the main character an exact representation of themselves. They have the same personality, well, what they think is their personality. And not only is the character like overly bland, but they're usually like, there's no character to the character. Like, if real people were interesting enough to put in a story, then that's fine. But, let's face it, if you're sitting down writing manga right now, you're probably not that interesting of a person. And if you are, that's great. If you have a great story of yourself, that's fine. But, other than that, just don't put yourself in the book unless you have something like interesting about you. Because the majority of people are actually pretty boring and would not make good characters in a manga. The good thing about manga, even though there is a lot of slice of life out there, uh, the main thing that makes manga interesting is how far away it is from realism. All right, we got one last comment here by Howard Jones. One is to never slaughter your whole cast. This mistake is one I see writers make to force their story to be darker or more mature. But it kind of becomes boring because the shock value goes away. If someone has to die, it better not be every second. And it should be of some value. Of course, all of what I say could be subverted if a writer is skilled enough. Like, you see this often with things like Game of Thrones, Attack on Titan, etc. Uh, to where they just kill characters left and right. If you have a story that is very heavy on death, uh, give an episode or two for people to heal. You know, kind of like in the movie the Princess Bride, they had to heal, heal the guy before they shocked him to death. Because, you know, torture and all that stuff. Pretty much, torture your on audience, don't just kill them. Because in that sense, 
like you're torturing them, but they're still alive. Which means they're still watching your show. But if you just kill them, then, you know, metaphorically speaking, then you've killed them away from your show or your book. And they're not no longer interested. Like, if, the, if all the characters they like die one after another, then they have no reason to watch or read your story anymore. But that's all I got in the character realm. Uh, let me know if you have any comments, things that you... What do you think about all this? Anyways, have a nice day.